Hello students, welcome you to this video. In this video, I am going to teach you the objective questions from chapter number 7, Applications of Differential Calculus. Let us see the first question. The volume of a sphere is increasing at the rate of 3 pi centimeter cube per second. Volume is increasing at the rate of so rate of change in volume is given so dv by dt is given as 3 pi centimeter cube per second the rate of change of its radius they are so they asked to find dr by dt when the radius is half centimeter okay so this is the question so these type questions this is more important you have to identify what is given and what they asked to find. Now choose the right formula, differentiate with respect to t, substitute the known values, you will get the answer. Okay, that's a very simple thing. So this is a sphere and volume. So you have to start with volume of sphere. So you must know the formula what is studied in 10 standard, right? So volume of sphere is v equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube. So now differentiating with respect to t, v derivative dv by dt, 4 by 3 pi, r cube derivative 3 r square into dr by dt, because we are differentiating with respect to t, right? Substitute the known values, dv by dt is 3 pi, here right side 3 and 3 cancel, so 4 pi r square r value given as 1 by 2 right 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 into dr by dt now just to simplify this you can cancel pi on both sides so here this 2 into 2 is 4 right everything get cancelled so dr by dt is equal to dr by dt everything only thing left out 3 right r is radius so centimeter per t time second so the correct answer is 3 centimeter per second. Second question. A balloon rises straight up at 10 meter per second. 10 meter per second. An observer is 40 meter away from the spot where the balloon left the ground. Find the rate of change of the balloon's angle of elevation in radians per second when the balloon is 30 meter above the ground so listen carefully so this is a, a person is standing here a balloon raises straight up at 10 meter per second observer is 40 meter away from the spot where the balloon left the ground balloon left the ground from b it's a special balloon it raises straight okay uh, at what speed 10 meter per second okay so I'm taking this as C so this BC is variable right it goes up it is increasing so I'm taking it as H so H is increasing so that is DH but it is 10 meter per second 10 meter per second an observer is 40 meter away from the spot so observer is at a so this length is 40 meter right so this is the angle of elevation the question is find the rate of change of the balloon's angle of elevation in radians per second when the balloon is 30 meter above the ground 30 meter above the ground that means at that time the height is what 10 meter okay so the question is d theta by dt when h equal to 30 meter okay this is the question so the previous question volume of sphere but here nothing it's a right angle triangle for a right angle triangle use Pythagoras theorem right but here normally we use Pythagoras theorem but here we don't want that slant height and all we want angle so this is angle a that is theta so opposite and adjacent so you can take what tan right tan theta so at the same time you try to find AC also so we want AC so we make use of this right angle triangle because we need that value later okay so angle B is 90 degree so using Pythagoras theorem AC is equal to root of BC square 40 square plus 
bc square 30 square so that is root of 1600 plus 900 root of 2500 right that is 50 meter so ac is 50 so we want rate of change in that angle right so d theta by dt so here opposite adjacent so we take tan theta so tan theta is equal to opposite side that is h that's a variable right h by b a b that's a constant so 40 okay now listen so we have to find d theta by dt so differentiating with respect to t differentiating with respect to t tan tan x derivative secant square x so tan theta derivative secant square theta into d theta by dt right so secant square theta into the theta derivative d theta by dt the right side 1 by 40 is constant h derivative dh by dt substitute the values secant theta how can you find secant theta from the triangle you can find secant theta secant is the reciprocal of cos what is cos theta adjacent by hypotenuse so secant is hypotenuse by adjacent hypotenuse by adjacent so it is 50 by 40 right so secant square theta so 50 by 40 square 50 by 40 into 50 by 40 d theta by dt that is what we want to find equal to 1 by 40 into dh by dt given 10 now listen in both the sides you can cancel 140 i am cancelling and here one zero you cancel and this zero and here one zero cancel so d theta by dt is equal to here this four goes up numerator 5 into 5 25 it comes down by 25 that much radian per second so answer is 4 by 25 that is option number 2 now question number 3 the position of a particle moving along a horizontal line in a horizontal line of any time t is given by s of t is equal to displacement is a function of t 3t square minus 2t minus 8 the time at which the particle comes to rest at rest means you know the velocity is equal to zero right so displacement is given then how can you find velocity just to differentiate one time right so velocity v equal to ds by dt rate of change of displacement <laughs> when you differentiate 60 minus 2 minus 8 derivative is 0 so you can say at rest velocity equal to 0 that means 60 minus 2 equal to 0 or 60 equal to 2 t equal to 2 by 6 equal to 1 by 3 so the correct answer is option number 2 okay now let's move on to question number 4 a stone is thrown up vertically in the previous one horizontally right stone is thrown up vertically the height it reaches at time t seconds is given by displacement x equal to 8 t minus 16 t square the stone reaches the maximum height so for maximum height suppose at from a you are throwing a stone it goes up falls on the ground right it goes up reaches the maximum height and falls on the ground at c it reaches the maximum height what's the speciality there you know at c the velocity will be zero velocity means what it's speed right so first it goes with maximum speed maximum velocity right maximum velocity gradually the speed is decreasing 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 right at one point that is at c it becomes zero it changes the direction and falls on the ground right so at c for maximum height the velocity equals zero so find velocity velocity is differentiate one time dx by dt that is 80 minus 32t so for maximum height for maximum height velocity equals zero that means that is 80 minus 32 t equal to zero 32 t equal to 80 
cancel by 16 table 5 equal to 2t rt equal to 5 by 2 right that is same as 2.5 seconds option number 2 question number 5 the point on the curve so we have to find a point on this curve that means if once you get x value you substitute here find y value if you get y value substitute and find x value right the point on the curve at which y coordinate changes y coordinate changes that means rate of change in y dy by dt rate y coordinate changes 8 times as fast as x coordinate dx by dt. This is what given in the question. Given in the question, y coordinate changes 8 times as fast as x coordinate. That is, rate of change in y is 8 times rate of change in x. Okay. So, with this information, we try to do that. Given equation is 6y equal to x cube plus 2. Differentiating with respect to t differentiating with respect to t so 6 into y derivative dy by dt equal to x cube 3x square into x derivative we have, because we are differentiating with respect to t so x derivative dx by dt 2 is a constant it's 0 right now 6 into dy by dt can be replaced by 8 into dx by dt. So, 6 into 8 into dx by dt equal to 3x square dx by dt. Now, both the sides you can cancel dx by dt. 3 table you cancel, you are getting 2. So, you are getting x square is equal to 8 to sub 16. So, x equal to root of 16, it is plus or minus 4. So, x equal to plus 4 another answer x equal to minus 4 you find the corresponding y value but see the answer starting with 4 starting with 4 starting with minus 4 also we have right you are going to get two points but what is given in the answer you have to select right choose the right one so we have to find y from here right 6y equal to x cube plus 2 6y is equal to x cube plus 2 So, you can find the corresponding y value. So, 6y is equal to x cube, that is 4 cube, 64 plus 2. So, 6y equal to 66, cancel by 6 table, y equal to 11. So, the one answer is x comma y, 4 comma 11. Actually, there are two points, right? Another one also you can find out x equal to minus 4. If you substitute in this case, you will be getting some value in negative in fraction. But here, uh, the first answer what you are getting is 4, 11, right? 4, 11 is there. So, there is a you can stop. So, uh, first one is not. But same question, if they ask us a 3 mark question or 2 mark question, find the points on the curve, you have to find the other one also, right? So, just to explain that part also. So, you substitute here 6y is equal to x cube plus 2. So, 6y equal to x cube minus 4 cube minus 64 plus 2. So, 6y equal to minus 62. So, y equal to minus 62 by 6 cancel minus 2 table, right? 31 by 3. So, the other point is minus 4 minus 31 by 3 minus 4 minus 32 it is not there okay so the best option is the first one now let's move on to question number six the abscissa abscissa means what x coordinate x coordinate we call it as abscissa and y coordinate we call it as ordinate okay the abscissa of a point on the curve that is you have to find x value that's all the abscissa of the point on the curve f of x equal to root of 8 minus 2x at which the slope of the tangent is this slope of the tangent is given slope of the tangent means dy by dx right so you find f dash x from here so f dash x is that is the slope this is of the type root x root x derivative 1 by 2 root 8 minus 2x don't stop into its derivative 8 derivative 0 minus 2x derivative minus 2 cancel 2 so you are getting 
f dash x is minus 1 by root of 8 minus 2x. But it is given the slope of the tangent is minus 0 0.25, minus 0 0.25, right? Minus 1 by root of 8 minus 2x. Cancel minus on both sides. So 1 by root of 8 minus 2x equal to 1 by 4, right? 0.25 can be written as 1 by 4. You cross multiply root of 8 minus 2x equal to 4. Square it. 8 minus 2x equal to 16. Or 2x is 8 minus 16, right? So 2x is equal to minus 8. And you are getting x is equal to minus 4, right? x is the abscissa. They didn't ask the point. Only x coordinate they asked. So x value you are getting minus 4. That is the second option. Now, sum number 7. Listen to the seventh question. The slope of the line normal to the curve. Slope of the tangent means dy by dx. Just to differentiate one time, f dash x. Slope of the tangent. Then how can you find slope of the normal? Once you know slope of the tangent, normal is the perpendicular line. So to find perpendicular line slope, two things you have to do. Change the sign and take the reciprocal, right? So first you find slope of the tangent. Then slope of the normal, you change the sign and take the reciprocal, right? The question is the slope of the line normal to the curve. See the, what's the given curve? f of x equal to 2 cos 4x. x equal to pi by 12 that you put at the last. You find f dash x. That is 2 into cos x derivative minus sin x into the 4x derivative 4, right? So you are getting minus 8 sin 4x. This is actually slope of the tangent, f dash x, right? So we want slope of the normal. Change the sign, so minus become plus and write the reciprocal, 1 by 8 sin 4x. Now x value given as pi by 12, at pi by 12, at x equal to pi by 12, the slope equal to 1 by 8 into sin 4 into pi by 12. 4 and 12 cancel, you are getting 3. 1 by 8 into sin pi by 3. Pi by 3 means 60, right? So that is 1 by 8 into sin 60. Sin 60 value, root 3 by 2. Root 3 by 2 cancel 2, you are getting 4. So you are getting 1 by 4 root 3. 1 by 4 root 3, 1 by 4 root 3 is not there, 4 root 3 and all there, 1 by 4 root 3 is not there. So rationalize the denominator, you put into root 3 by root 3. So your answer is 1 into root 3, root 3, denominator is root 3 into root 3 is 3, 3 4 are 12. So root 3 by 12, that is the third option, okay. So if the answer is not there, don't think it is none of these questions is wrong. You try some other form it would have given, right? Now question number 8. The tangent to the curve y square minus xy plus 9 equals 0 is vertical. Is vertical. Vertical means it is parallel to y-axis, right? So you can, you know, the slope is equal to infinity x-axis, the slope is 0, that is a horizontal. The slope is 0, the vertical, the slope is infinity, right? So, when can you say a fraction is infinity? The denominator becomes 0, right? So, with this idea, we will try to do this. So, given function is y square minus xy plus 9 equal to 0. So, see the answer, y equal to, right? So, y value we need, right? So, y equal to, even in the last one also, it is y equal to plus or minus root 3. Okay, so these are the options. Now listen here. So this is a given curve. So differentiate with respect to x. Differentiating with respect to x. It is given in implicit form, right? Everything mixed together. y square derivative 2y dy by dx minus of x into y, you have to be very careful, you have to apply product rule here, x into y, x into first into y derivative dy by dx plus y into x derivative 1 plus 9 derivative 0 equal to 0. 
So 2y dv by dx minus x dv by dx minus y equals 0. Take this minus y to the right side, it is plus y. From the first two terms, you take dv by dx common, you are getting 2y minus x, right? So dy by dx is equal to y by 2y minus x, right? So, but in this case, the slope equal to what? Infinity. So dy by dx equal to undefined infinity, which implies y by 2y minus x equal to infinity. That means the denominator 0. 2y minus x equal to 0 or x equal to 2y, right? x is equal to 2y. Sub we want y value. So this x value is substituted in the given function. We want y value because the answer is the given y, right? So wherever x comes, you put 2y. So y square minus instead of x, you put 2y. 2y into y plus 9 equal to 0. So y square minus 2y into y plus 9 equal to 0. You are getting y square minus 2y square plus 9 equal to 0. Minus y square plus 9 equal to 0. Take minus y square to the right side. So y square equal to 9. So y equal to root 9. It is plus or minus 3. Right? y equal to plus or minus 3. And that is option number 4. So tangent to the curve is vertical. Okay? So dy by dx is infinity. If they say horizontal, you say dy by dx equal to 0. Now let's move on to question number 9. Angle between y square equal to x and x square equal to y at the origin. Please listen very carefully. Angle between two lines, you know. You know there is a formula. You can understand very easily. Angle between two lines means what it is. Angle between two lines. But what's the meaning of angle between two curves? Angle between two curves means, see, this is a curve and this is a curve. Angle between two curves, by that what we mean? At the point of intersection, you draw tangents. At the point of intersection, you draw tangents. Angle between the two tangents only, we call it as angle between two curves. Okay. So, here there is an easy method. You see, y square equal to x, what is that? It's a parabola, right? Which type? First type, open right word, y square equal to 4ax type. So it is a parabola with vertex at the origin. Okay, so this is one curve. This is one curve. Another curve, x square equal to y. x square equal to y, that is another parabola, right? x square equal to y, x square equal to 4ay, third type, open upward, right? That is another parabola. Both the parabola, you know, the point of intersection is what? The origin, yes, at the origin only. The question is, angle between these two at the origin, that is a point of intersection. Another point also, they intersect. But they didn't ask at that point, they asked at the origin. So please listen, for the first curve, at the point of intersection, you draw tangent. For the first curve, this is the first curve, right? So y square equal to x. For that curve, the point of, in, the, uh, point of intersection is O. At that point, the tangent, what is the tangent line there? Actually, the tangent line is y-axis. For the first curve, the tangent at the point of intersection is y-axis. For the second curve, y square equal to x, y square, sorry, second one is x square equal to y, right? x square is equal to y. For that, it, the tangent line at the point of intersection, at the origin, is x-axis. So the two tangents are y-axis and x-axis. Angle between the two lines means it is what? 90 degrees. So no need for any calculation. You can say the angle is equal to 90 degrees. Because for these two parabolas, the tangents are y-axis and x-axis. So angle between the two lines is equal to what? 90 degrees. So the correct answer is the third option. So that is question number 9. Now let's move on to the next question. That is question number 10. Listen to this question. For what value of the limit? Limit extends to 0, cortex minus 1 by x. So question is limit extends to 0, cortex minus 1 by x. If you apply the limit directly, if you put 0, see what you get, cot 0. 
cot 0, tan 0 is 0, cot 0 is infinity, minus 1 by 0 is also infinity, you cannot apply L'Hopital's rule. So limit extends to 0, cot x can be written as cos x by sin x, minus 1 by x, you take LCM now, limit extends to 0, LCM is x into sin x, so you are getting x cos x minus x, apply the limit now, for x you put 0, x when you put 0, 0 into cos 0 is 1, so 0 minus 0, numerator 0, x you are giving 0, sin 0 also 0 only, 0 into 0 that is 0, you are getting 0 by 0, when it is 0 by 0, you can apply L'Hopital's rule. You can apply L'Hopital's rule when it is what? 0 by 0 or at least infinity by infinity, right? So when you apply L'Hopital's rule, limit extends to 0. What is L'Hopital rule? If it is 0 by 0, you differentiate denominator separately, differentiate numerator separately. Don't apply any quotient rule, right? Denominator, you differentiate x sin x. There you apply product rule, don't apply quotient rule, okay? x into sin x. So differentiate product rule first into sin x derivative cos x plus sin x into x derivative 1. Numerator differentiate x cos x, you have to apply product rule, first into x into cos x derivative minus sin x plus cos x into x derivative 1 minus that x derivative 1, apply the limit now when you apply, x you are giving 0, right? When you put x equals 0, the first time is 0, plus cos 0 is 1, minus 1, denominator x value is 0, plus sin 0 also 0, 1 minus 1, 0 by 0 again. So you have to apply L'Hopital rule one more time. So it is given as an objective question, they can ask even as a 5 mark question or 3 mark question. So practice well, try to understand the method, not the answer. Okay. So applying L'Hopital's rule again. So when you again apply L'Hopital's rule, limit extends to 0, listen very carefully, denominator, here apply product rule, first into cos x derivative minus sin x, plus cos x into x derivative 1, plus sin x derivative cos x, numerator minus of, here you apply product rule, okay, so first, x first into x into sin x derivative cos x, plus sin x into x derivative 1, plus cos x derivative minus sin x, right? Minus 1 derivative 0. So apply the limit now, wherever x comes you put 0. So sin 0 is 0, this is 0, sin 0 0, numerator is 0, denominator first term 0, cos 0 is 1, plus cos 0 1. So 0 by 2, 0 by a number, your answer is what? 0. So, two times we applied L'Hopital rule. Okay, so in this video I taught first 10 questions, remaining 10 questions I'll teach you in the next video.